In the small town of Devil's Gate, a traveler gets stranded when the battery of his car suddenly dies. Worse, his mobile phone is low on battery so he cannot call for help. At this time, the traveler sees a house nearby. The place looks worn out with its windows all boarded up. Looking at the mailbox, he sees the name Pritchard on it. He enters the property and tries to ask for help, but no one answers him. At this time, he hears a man screaming in anger from inside the house. The traveler follows the noise and sees a man named Jackson through the basement window. Thinking that Jackson is torturing another person, he backs away in fear. Unfortunately, his foot gets caught in a bear trap. He screams in pain and it alerts Jackson and the dog. As soon as he removes the trap, the traveler limps away to escape. However, he gets caught in another trap, finally killing him. Jackson gets out of the house and finds the traveler's dead body. Elsewhere in another part of the town, a deputy named Conrad Colt Salter is playing a crossword puzzle on his patrol mobile. A plane shortly arrives after and he meets with an FBI special agent named Daria Francis. Colt enthusiastically welcomes Daria and they head out to the station. After a while, the local sheriff named Grunwell meets with her. They get to the sheriff's office where he hands her some files. Daria is investigating the disappearance of a local woman named Maria Pritchard and her young son Jonah. Grunwell shares his sentiment that this case is kind of a waste of time for Daria and the FBI. According to Grunwell, he and Colt already went to the place of Maria's home three days ago. And the only thing they noted is that Maria's car is missing. Upon reading the files, Daria notices something odd about the husband, who was the Jackson that appeared earlier. As the husband, he didn't file a report, but Maria's sister named Theresa did. Maria and her son were supposed to go to Theresa, but it didn't happen because they had gone missing. Grunwell thinks that Maria just came to her senses and finally left Jackson. As it turns out, Colt and Jackson went to high school together, so he knows the man. The sheriff says Jackson is someone who has a bad temper, but he is not a murderer. Daria then argues that if Maria and her son just left Jackson, she must have told Theresa about it. She also adds that 45% of murdered women are killed by their husbands or Leiden partners. Therefore, she must follow up on all of the clues she will find in this case. At this time, Grunwell is starting to get frustrated because Daria is showing doubt about their investigation of the case. He thinks that as the local sheriff, he knows his community better than her. Then, Grunwell brings up the Breland case and tells Daria that she didn't do well in that case. When Colt enters the office, the sheriff orders him to take Daria to find Theresa and check her in at the town's inn. Meanwhile, at the Pritchard's residence, the prisoner in the basement makes loud noises and Jackson angrily tells them to shut up. He also threatens to kill them if they don't stay silent. Going back to Daria and Colt, the two are seeming to get along well, compared to Daria's initial interaction with Runewell. Colt remembers what Daria and the sheriff are talking about and asks about the Breland case. According to Daria, about a year ago, a young girl named Tanya Breland went missing. It was the first case that Daria led. And four months after the case was given to her, Daria found Tanya in a shelter run by an Islamist group. But the young woman didn't want to go home. They ran some tests on Tanya and everything was normal. So Daria took her home. But one day, Tanya showed up in her office and blamed Daria for ruining her life. Then, the girl killed herself in front of Daria. Hearing this, Colt asks if that is the reason why she was assigned to the Pritchard case. But Daria reveals that she decided to take this case on her own. After a while, they finally arrive at Theresa's house. Daria begins questioning Theresa about her sister. According to their conversation, she discovers that Maria and Jana usually come to Theresa's place whenever the situation in their home gets hard and stressful. Daria then asks if Jackson causes the stress to which Theresa says yes. She adds that Jackson and her sister never really get along well. Theresa also reveals that her sister's husband was already in prison more than once. Hearing this, Daria looks at Colt in disbelief. Colt tells her Jackson was in prison because of his drunken disorderly behavior and so is for simple assault. Theresa continues to uncover that Jackson is getting worse, especially his temper. However, Maria cannot leave Jackson because of their son. As it turns out, Maria and Jackson got married at a young age, and Maria suffered a lot of miscarriages. And when she finally had Jonah, she considered him her miracle. Remembering what Grunwell told her earlier, Daria asks if Maria will ever leave town without saying goodbye or telling Theresa where they will go. Theresa notes that Maria will never do such a thing. After that, Theresa takes Daria and Colt to her room where Maria and Jonah slept whenever they stopped by. Examining Jonah's makeshift room in the closet, Daria finds a notebook full of the kid's drawings. One of them shows that Jackson is beating him and his mother, while other drawings portray Jackson as the devil. 
Then all of a sudden, the sister's grandmother shows up, emotionally telling Daria that Jackson is a monster. Theresa quickly consoles her grandmother and assures her that the authorities will find Maria and Jonah. Afterward, Daria and Colt leave and go back to the car. Daria wants to continue investigating Jackson after everything she discovered about him, but Colt points out that Sheriff Grunewell will not like it if they pursue Jackson. He also says that even though Jackson is tough and strict, he is a good man deep down in his heart. This is when Daria shows Colt Jonah's notebook that she sneakily took from the kid's makeshift room. Seeing the drawings, Colt is convinced to go to Jackson for further investigation. On their way, Colt tries to inform Groon well of what they will do. But Daria stops him, pointing out that the sheriff will just stop them. She then assures Colt that she will take full responsibility for going against Grunewell's order. Upon arriving at the place, they find the traveler's car still parked outside. Daria inspects it and wonders why someone would leave their car unlocked with all their belongings, including the car key, inside. When Daria and Colt approach the house, the dog barks and wakes up Jackson. Looking around the place, Colt is puzzled because the place looks very different from what it was three days ago. He asks Daria to stay put at the moment while he tries to find Jackson. The gate is locked, so Colt goes around while Daria stays by the car with a radio to keep her communication with him. Seeing a barn, Daria goes to check it and finds Maria's car. Suddenly, Jackson shows up and points his gun at Daria. She calmly introduces herself and tells Jackson her purpose in his place. Jackson leads her outside where Colt is already waiting with his hands in the air. He is trying to convince Jackson to put his gun down, but the man wants them out of his property. At this time, Colt distracts Jackson by telling him a story, allowing Daria to catch him off guard and disarm him. She then orders Colt to cuff Jackson. Down on his knees, Jackson is questioned about where Maria and Jonah are, but he insists that they are not in the house. Just then, they hear a shrieking noise from the house. Daria immediately goes to check it. Jackson tries to stop her but fails. He pleads with Colt to stop Daria because something worse might happen. As she goes inside the gate, Daria sees some of the traps lying around. She carefully goes inside the house, avoiding all the traps she sees. Then she checks the rooms upstairs but sees nothing. Going back downstairs, she finally finds the boarded up door and other weapons that belong to Jackson. Seeing this, Daria removes all the locks and goes down to the basement. She reports it to Colt, but their transmission is starting to weaken. At this time, Jackson is secretly removing the handcuffs from his hands. Back in the basement, Daria sees that the dog is not barking at her, but at someone from across the room. Suddenly, the door of the basement closes aggressively, like someone slammed it shut. Hearing it from the outside, Jackson says that Colt needs to tell Daria to get out of the house right now. But this doesn't startle Daria. She lights up a lamp and looks inside the cage. There, Daria sees a weird, slimy, and gooey thing with a light glowing inside it. She pokes it using a stick and something wraps around the stick, then breaks it. That is when Daria finally sees the humanoid creature with a big head inside the cage. Outside, Jackson finally gets out of his cuffs and tries to run back to the house. But Colt manages to restrain him again. Just then, Daria comes out of the house. She goes straight to Jackson and questions him about the creature in the cage. She thinks that Jackson is doing some sort of experiment on livestock. Jackson denies it and says that what she saw is a demon. Then, Jackson tells them that one of the demons took his wife and son. That is why he imprisoned it to get them back. Of course, Daria doesn't believe him. Colt, who is clueless about what they are talking about, asks for an explanation. Daria tells him that Jackson is keeping a deformed wild animal in his basement. She also asks what is that jelly thing she found there, to which Jackson says that it is what the demon was wearing when he captured it. After the questioning, Daria and Colt arrest Jackson. Daria pulls out her phone, but it's completely dead. Colt checks his phone, and it is bricked too. They decide to just call the station on the road, but the car won't start as well. Colt checks the machine, but he cannot see any problem. At this moment, Daria remembers the car on the road from earlier. The demon seems to have interfered with any electronic devices that are within the vicinity. Daria goes to check Maria's car, while Colt stays by their car. At this time, bad weather is brewing in the sky. Seeing this, Jackson panics and tells Colt to free him. When Daria gets back with the bad news that Maria's car is dead as well, she also sees the clouds above. When the lightning starts striking, Daria gets Jackson out of the car while Colt goes into the house first. Unfortunately, Colt triggers a trap, causing an arrow to shoot at his leg. Luckily, he's not injured badly. While treating Colt's leg, Daria suggests that she go for a walk to get help. But Jackson points out that the nearest farm is 13 miles away. Daria doesn't want to stay at the house, but Jackson insists that the demon won't let her leave. 
Also, they are more active at night. Colt backs up Jackson and says it's dangerous outside. He believes that Grunewell will come looking for them since they have been gone for a while now. However, Daria doubts it because they didn't report to Grunewell that they will go to Pritchard's place. She then says that she saw someone when the lightning struck the field earlier. Hearing this, Jackson quickly gets to the window and says that it's Maria. Daria doubts this but still accompanies Jackson outside. And to her surprise, he is actually telling the truth. They immediately bring Maria back inside the house. As soon as Maria wakes up, she looks for Jonah and blames Jackson for what happened to them. When Daria hears this, she asks Maria what really happened. According to Maria, Jackson offers Jonah to the angels. When she is about to tell how the so-called angels got her and Jonah, Jackson stops her. Just then, Jackson finally reveals everything to Daria and Colt. According to him, once Jonah got very sick and he didn't want to call a doctor. Instead, they went to the field and he forced Maria to pray to God while putting Jonah a few feet away from them. Then, a bright light shone upon them and lightning struck where Jonah was. When Maria tried to look at what happened, Jackson ordered her not to look. But she didn't listen. She saw the angel and it took her along with Jonah. When Jackson saw Maria was being taken, he grabbed one of the angels and attacked it. Afterward, he dragged and imprisoned it in the basement. After the story, Daria asks if it's the first time that he saw those angels. Jackson says no and reveals that he was once taken as well. He says that he once found himself surrounded by angels like they were studying him, but their conversation is interrupted when the angel from the basement shrieks. They all go down to see it, and Jackson thinks that it's calling the other angels, and he has proven to be right because they hear his dog fighting something upstairs. Jackson says they need to power up the generator. As it turns out, he has electrified the house as protection against the angels. He and Colt go to the generator while Daria stays with Maria. When the two men leave, an angel gets to the basement. Daria manages to shoot it, but when the lights are turned back on, it's gone. When the four meet up again, they head outside to look for Jackson's dog and to retrieve the gun from Colt's car. But to their horror, the angels have already brutally taken out Jackson's dog. Angry, Jackson cuts one of the fingers of the angel he captured and plans to show it to other angels. Then he goes outside, followed by Daria and Colt, and starts digging in the same spot where they got Maria. When he digs up a metal disc with a symbol embedded in it, he places the angel's finger there. Looking at the symbol, Daria remembers that she saw that symbol before. Then, lightning strikes in that area and the finger is gone afterward. That is when they realize that it's the front door to heaven. Knowing this, the three head back to the house. Inside, Daria shows Jackson Jonah's notebook where he drew the same symbol. She says that Jonah must know about the angels and that's why they're interested in him. Jackson thinks that it's just a coincidence. Looking around, Daria sees a photo of young Jackson with his father. In the picture, it shows in the background that the disc is not yet placed on the ground. That is when Jackson remembers what his father used to tell him. He says that his great-great-grandfather is said to be led in this place by God, and that whatever happens, they should never let go of the land because someday they will reap God's harvest here. Daria points out that the only way for them to clarify all of this is to talk to the angel in the basement. When Jackson grabs its foot to drag it outside, it suddenly gets up and grabs onto him. Memories then come flashing back in Jackson's mind. It turns out that the real Jackson was killed by the angels before and was replicated. Jackson now is a replication of angels. Just then, Maria shows Daria and Colt the corpse of their children that looks exactly like the angels. As it turns out, Maria never had a miscarriage. It is fake Jackson who killed their angel-looking children and called them an abomination. Worse, he made Maria feel that it was her fault. Hearing everything from Maria and Jackson, Daria realizes that the angels are trying to replace them. In fact, the angels' world is dying and they cannot fix it anymore. They're replacing people so they can learn to adapt to life on Earth. And Jonah is very important to them because he's the first natural-born human angel. Colt gets angry when he hears all of this and tries to attack Jackson. Daria stops him and orders him to secure the house. At this time, he sees that angels are starting to gather outside. To make matters worse, the generator overloads and the house loses power. In the basement, Daria plans to continue the negotiation with the angels for Jonah and their lives in exchange for the captured angel. She and Maria convince Jackson to help, appealing to what's left of the real Jackson in him. Jackson finally agrees to help. But all of a sudden, he knocks out Daria, planning to do things his way. Upstairs, as an angel enters the house, Colt tries to fight it. However, it just brutally rips Colt's body open, killing him. When the angel gets to the basement, Jackson just walks past it while carrying the sick angel. After a while, Daria regains her consciousness. 
Maria tells her that Jackson has taken the angel and all the corpses of their babies. At this moment, Daria promises Maria that she will get Jonah back. Then, she goes upstairs and finds Colt's corpse. Apologizing to him, Daria closes Colt's eyes and picks up his gun. Meanwhile, Jackson manages to get back Jonah from the angels. But as it turns out, Jackson plans to kill his son to stop the scheme of the angels. Just in time, Daria arrives and points her gun at Jackson, ordering him to stop. Jonah also begs his father, but Jackson tells him that it's for the best. When Jackson is about to kill his son, a hole suddenly blows in his head. However, it is not Daria who shot him, but Maria who wants to save her son. But she's not done yet and points the gun at Daria because she won't let anyone take her son away from her. She thinks that when all of this is done, the government will take Jonah and study him. Just then, an angel shrieks loudly as lightning continuously strikes at the disc. When disc overloads, it explodes. The impact knocks back Daria, Maria, and Jonah. Daria immediately gets back to her feet and picks up the gun. She then sees Maria comforting Jonah. When the sun rises, Sheriff Grunewell and other deputies arrive. Maria tells the authorities that everything that happened was Jackson's fault. According to her version of the story, Jackson imprisoned her and their son. Then, he brutally murdered Colt when they tried to rescue them. Afterward, she killed Jackson when he was about to murder Jonah. And lastly, the huge crater in the field was caused by an improvised explosive device that was left out there. Hearing all of this, Daria denies it to Grunwell and tells him about the angels. But the sheriff doesn't want to listen to her and accepts Maria's version. Daria tries to argue but Grunwell already declares that the case is closed. Later on, she rides a patrol mobile away from the Pritchards, wondering if anyone will believe her story. The movie ends with Jonah telling his mom that there are more discs hidden under the barn and saying that it's time to harvest. The film Devil's Gate has a very promising plot, but with its over-expository dialogues, the twist can be easily guessed by the audience before the movie reveals it. On the other hand, it does a good job of keeping the mystery of creatures. Are they actually angels or aliens? By not revealing it directly, the movie allows the audience to have an open discussion about it.